news brief. The Mobile Studios Viper has closed a round of funding. That sees the German company walking away with an additional $2.8 million for its future projects. That's according to a venture deal story that says the latest round saw contributions from all of Viper's existing shareholders. Though Modern Times Growth played the round, the team, meanwhile, plans to use the funds to expand its business and grow the studio. To date, Swiper has raised $5.3 million since 2016. The 1-0 developer company released its first game Super Spell Heroes, Far Eos and Android last year. And the representative from Matic explains in a statement that the success of that game motivated its investment. Hey game makers, organizers of the 2019 Game Developers Conference Air Place Tour announced that scheduling for the all new AD mentoring program is now live and ready for you to use. This is a brand new program intended to help encourage game development professionals to continue and grow in their personal careers. And you can take advantage of I try to now be logging into the DD, connect matchmaking tool and selecting a mentoring session type that meets your needs. Mentors, comprised of seasoned professionals across all sections of the industry, will be matched with you via the system. And meetings will take place in the DD Mentoring Lounge located in the South Hall Expo. With pound key as far 6 3. Session formats include available tour summits, conference summits, conference all access pass holders, available tour expo to as pass holders, to allow as many DD attendees as possible to participate in the program. Only one session selection may be made. New sessions will be added each week prior to DD, so check back in for more options. Continue planning out while you are GTC 2019 experience via the official 2019 schedule builder, which continues to add new talks every week. Bring your team to DD. Register a group of 10 or more and save 10% in conference passes. Learn M-O-R-A-H-E-R-A. For more details on GDC 2000, on 19 visit the show's official website, or subscribe to your regular updates via Facebook, Twitter, OS, God Art Sutra and DD as sibling organizations, under parent company and former Sebastian S. D. P. I. E. The creative director of CD Project Res, upcoming game Cyberpunk 2077, is seemingly making the jump from the Polish studio to Blizzard Entertainment, as spotted by the Res Setter user. As DPIE's LinkedIn account that shows him as having started at Blizzard in January as a creative director on an unnamed project. Though that same profile has not been updated to show when he left CD Projekt Red, SDPI spent over 12 years at CD Projekt Red, working as a dialogue writer, lead story designer, creative director, and narrative film setting director throughout this time with the company. During that time, SDPI had his hands in the creation of all three games in The Witcher series including several enhanced edition releases, and, most recently, Cyberpunk 2077, Newsbrief, Fat Shark, the Swedish developer behind Warhammer, Vintai 2, has secured an investment from the Chinese video game, and the technology giant Tencent, reports from the Swedish website, Due Digital say, that the deal sets, Tencent back around $56 million in exchange, or a 36% stake, making the Chinese company the minority owner in Fat Shark. In a translated statement, Fat Shark CEO Martin Walland says that the investment sees Fat Shark retaining its independence and avoiding any major changes to its business. On Fat Shark's side, the shares up. 
photographs were partially newly issued shares and partially some recently put up for sale by a previous investor. Star Control Origins has been pulled from Steam and Dark. Come after Paul Rutherford and Robert Frederick for Dishity DMZA. Take down notice against the title. Right can't fold on the designers behind the classic 1900, a 90 Myth Dark title Star Control Tour, and have been engaged in a long running legal dispute with Star Control Origins maker Star Dark over the trademarks and copyrights to Star Control. Star Dark Lamset acquired the rights to the Star Control series from Atari back in 2013. But I can't afford have suggested that Dari actually gave up the rights to the franchise a decade before the sale took place. The pair subsequently began working on a direct support of Star Control, second called Ghosts of the Precursors, a move that resulted in Star Dark suing both designers for trademark infringement while pushing ahead with the development of its own Star Control title. Rich and Ford responded with a countersuit, and have now managed to strike another blow by issuing this DMCA. Stardock attempted to get a preliminary art injunction to prevent Reich and Ford from issuing more false DMCA takedown notices, but the cause refused to intervene. As a result, Star Control Origins is currently unavailable for purchase on both Steam and Dark. Although anyone who's already bought the title should still be able to play in a lengthy post on the Steam forums, Stardock criticized the Reich and Ford for bypassing the legal system and jeopardizing the livelihood of its development team by issuing the vague orders. For those not familiar with copyright law, you cannot copyright ideas, individual or short phrases, concepts, mechanics. Game designs. E. P. C. Wrote the developer. Star Control. Origins is of a own creation. Without relying on the work of Reich. Our fault. We spent five years working on it making it our own game. That's it. Time and time again we have requested. Specifically. What elements in Star Control. Origins they think their copyright applies to. If the request was not onerous, we did be willing to comply. Unfortunately, without the income from Star Control or Origins, Stardock will have to lay off some of the men and the women who are assigned to the game. We will do our very best to continue to support the game and hopefully, Star Control Origins will return as soon as possible. Every year the pace of chance accelerates. 2017 saw advances on a scale never before seen, and 2018 trumped that by considerable margin. I hope this post will share a sense of that change, of where the industry is currently at, and where it will be heading in future. There have been too many advances in inclusion of gamers with disabilities to be able to cover everything here. So I am concentrating on a few key themes. Hardware platform middleware, information, advocacy awareness raising, games, and a little on legislation. X adaptive controller in use at Creek Hospital. First and foremost the launch of the X adaptive controller, announced in mid for Global Accessibility Awareness Day, and on sale in September. I will not go into too much detail as awareness is now pretty high. But the short version is that it's some device that can be used in conjunction with a regular controller to replace anything between one and all of the inputs with custom hardware. Developed over a number of years in conjunction with Warfighter Engaged, Cerebral Palsy Foundation, Able Gamers, Special Effect and many other individual gamers, advocates and specialists. From a developer's perspective, it's just a regular X controller, so if you want to support its design, other people who use it 
in particular think about flexibility and avoiding unnecessary complexity. Not everyone is able to use 18 buttons, or press three things at the same time. What it is not is a device that takes care of accessibility, so that you do not have to. If anything the lack increases the need for accessibility in games. As there are now more games who are able to get past hardware barriers, only to encounter them in games. The lack has already had tremendous impact, not only on the direct impact, but also on general public awareness of and feeling towards accessibility more on that later. Microsoft also introduced a bunch of other nice things to the XLX skill, the input learning mode for narrator, the new X avatars, including wheelchairs and prosthetics, Windows Keys input API.